All right, welcome back. This is now part two, so this will be images six through ten of my favorite photos of 2022. I'm just going to cut and paste in my little caveat that I did on the first video, starting right about now. My favorites are not necessarily my best photos, and some of that is some of them are great, I think. Uh, but that's the thing about best is it's totally subjective. So what I think is best is probably not what you think is best, and everybody has different ideas on what is best. And now that that's been said, let's get on to the images. So we're still in Africa here in February, and this is obviously a female lion with two cubs who are being rambunctious and she needs to tell them to knock it off. Uh, so they were just kind of wrestling and biting her ears and tugging on her tail, and which was awesome, so fun to watch. And uh, look for these little moments to photograph where you're getting some interaction or something interesting because lions sleep a lot. And when you go to Africa, you're gonna see tons of sleeping lions. And so looking for these little moments when things happen like this only happened for a split second, uh, and then it was back to, she flopped back down and laid down and the cubs continued doing their thing. But uh, you get these little moments, so you gotta wait for these and then bang, make sure you don't, don't miss them there. Uh, so this is mama scolding one of the cubs, and it worked out great. Just beautiful interaction image with three subjects again. That works really well with the two cubs and then mama, Maybe her teeth. Maybe that's a fourth subject. Probably is. Uh, anyway, love this image. I loved that scene and watching these cubs mess with mama. That was fun. This is Sony A1 with the 402.8 at a 640th of a second F4 and ISO 1600. So, great image. Not much else to say about that one. Just a good moment with good interaction of beautiful subjects. All right, next image. This is in Masai Mara in February. I think this was our last morning in Masai Mara, if I recall. Uh, so this is as the sun is starting to come up and this big male is doing the Fleming response, which is a pheromone scenting. I think he's trying to sniff and see if any of the ladies nearby are in heat. So he's looking for some of those pheromones from them. Uh, so anyway, just a beautiful silhouette, beautiful sky. And pre-dawn, I love this kind of environmental photo. Uh, and you could shoot this 20 different ways, you know. You could get up close to him and do it that way. You could shoot it wide like I chose to do here. This was shot at 100 millimeters, so I actually, the guide was trying to get closer to him and I actually was like, no, 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 so let's stop here and get a couple of shots from a distance first. Uh, and so this was at 100 millimeters with the Nikon Z9. One one sixtieth of a second F5 ISO 1600. So still pretty dark out. Uh, but then once we made a couple of photos from this distance, shooting pretty wide to get the environment and those amazing clouds, we moved in closer for some more intimate portrait -y stuff with this beautiful male. He was just awesome. Uh, anyway, so I just wanted to capture the clouds and the silhouette of that lion. Uh, luckily, the grass wasn't too tall there, so uh, we got uh, to see the lion, his legs, his tail, and everything wasn't all obscured by the grass. So just a wonderful image. I love, love, love this style of image, and I'm just psyched to have been there to make this one. So this is the same lion, the same morning, but let me look real quick. This was after we had driven up closer to the lion. The light had come up a little bit. So this is 11 minutes later than the previous shot with the big sky and the silhouette. So 11 minutes later, the light level had come up. We had changed positions, so we weren't totally backlit here. And the lion was still looking for love out there and he was scanning the planes. Uh, and he is just absolutely majestic and beautiful. I got as low as I could here to get him up above the horizon line into that kind of peachy sky. Uh, geez, there's just nothing to not like about this in my opinion. Just magnificent animal, beautiful environment. The black mane, just spectacular. 
So uh, just a magic shot, if you ask me. Uh, this one, same, same setup. The, no, not the same setup. I used the Z9 on the other one, shooting it wide. This one I shot with the A1 and the 402.8. So I was at F2.8, ISO 3200 here to get 500th of a second. So because he had been on the move, he was like walking, he was coming at us, he was moving around a little bit. I wanted to make sure I had at least a 500th of a second here to get it nice and sharp. So I cranked up the ISO to 3200 there and no problem at all. I'd prefer to be at ISO 1600 there to be a little cleaner, but uh, I'd also prefer to have a sharp image when you have like such a magic moment happening here. You don't wanna screw that up with motion blur. So just, I'd rather have a little bit of noise than a little bit of motion blur. So it worked out great here. And I absolutely love this portrait. Just fantastic. Okay, on to the next one. We're back with another lion. This is a different lion. Uh, and this one was found early, early in the morning before sunrise on a kind of dull, rainy day. And so I wanted the, the image to capture that kind of dark, dull, early scene of, this is like what, what Africa's about, man. Lions hiding in the bushes, that's pretty awesome. And so that's kind of, you know, you conjure up in your head, like in the movies, the lion hiding in the bushes is going to attack you or attack the zebra or whatever. Uh, and to me, that kind of conjured up that kind of feeling of this lion's waiting in the bushes for whatever reason to attack me, although that's not the case. They were actually looking um, at some gazelle nearby. Uh, but anyway, a nice, dark, moody capture here of a beautiful subject well hidden, showing kind of the environment and how the lions live in the bush like that and hunt. So wonderful image there. Sony A1, 400 millimeter, 2.8, ISO 3200, 1 500th of a second. Uh, so again, I could have lowered that ISO and got a slower shutter speed as he stopped and paused here to look around, but he had, he was moving through the the bushes there, so I kept a 500th of a second to be able to uh, freeze any kind of action of him walking, moving through the bush. And let's see, one, two, three, four, five. We have one more in this batch of five. I've left Africa. We're out of Africa now. Back in the Tetons, my home. And this is in April, the day that 399 and her four sub-adult cubs appeared after being in den all winter. They might have been out of the den earlier than that, but this was the first day anybody saw them, uh, that they came into a part of the park where they're visible. And the conditions just couldn't have been more spectacular. I mean, an absolute hammering snowstorm, spring, April snowstorm. And these bears came out and that's the Snake River that they had just crossed and are now walking through a snow field. And it's, it's manual focus only out there because it was snowing so hard. Uh, I absolutely loved the conditions. I absolutely adore this image. I am just so thankful that I was able to be there for this and to capture uh, an image of all five of these bears. You know, you can see mom out front. She's a little bit bigger than the four cubs, but these are four big, uh, you know, sub-adult cubs. And this is just not something you see very often. So a very special moment for me and the group of people that were there uh, to witness this. It's just uh, wonderful. And I'm glad I have this image to um, kind of commemorate that for me. It's just wonderful. Absolute magic. So this was the Nikon Z9 with the 70 to 200, uh, one four hundredth of a second f7.1 ISO 800. So that four hundredth of a second was just fast enough to freeze the majority of the motion blur of those snowflakes, and uh, it worked out great. Because yeah, if with that heavy the snow, having much more streakiness in that snow would have just blurred out the image to oblivion, I think. So. Uh, it was a fine line of trying to uh, figure out a shutter speed there that was appropriate for that scene. But it worked out. I think it's wonderful. And I'm just psyched to be able to have witnessed that and been able to 
make such a nice image out of that scene. Okay, so there's the second batch of five. We've gone through the top 10 now. Let's uh, move on to images 11 through 15 next.